Hey there, welcome to day 49 of our Let's Grow Annual Challenge. Sharon Hornos from here, and today we're going to talk about understanding, how do we understand criticism and judgment and the role and the impact that it has on our relationships. I'm going to grab my magnifying glass because I did a, a, a couple of things yesterday. I did uh, compare and contrast with criticism because criticism, like so many things, can be constructive criticism and destructive criticism. So I want to talk about the difference between those two. And then I want to talk a little bit about judgment because it's something I, I used to have, I think, a problem with. And I had a huge uh, wake up call in my life and that caused me to absolutely positively change my perspective and my thoughts and feelings about judgment. I did a total 180, total reversal of how I used to act and be and feel about judgment in the past. Uh, Judgment meaning being opinionated or having an opinion or a uh, ruling, literally a ruling on absolutely everything. So let's talk about criticism first. There's constructive criticism. And this reminds me a lot of feedback. I remember in, in corporate America and even in school, right? We were always looking for those good grades on our papers or little gold stars. And when we got them, we felt great. When we didn't get them, we we're like, hmm, we felt a little disappointed. Uh, and the same is true with... Uh, you know, feedback and criticism. And a lot of times feedback is criticism, right? Or it's it's called feedback, but it feels like an attack or criticism. So constructive criticism, the, I think the difference between constructive and destructive criticism is actually the intent of the person delivering the communication or the message. Uh, if they uh, intend it in a positive way, if it's a genuine concern, if it is uh, the desire for improvement and to help you out and make you a better human being, if it's rooted in empathy, if it is delivered with tact and sensitivity, if it is uh, something that highlights areas for development, doesn't just necessarily trash you for something, just says, hey, when you use this word, it sounds like you don't know what you're talking about. Or when you act this way or blow off the handle, it has this impact on me and other people, things like that. But it's delivered because, not because you want to harm the person, but because you want them to generally be better, right? And have a better life and better experiences. It offers support and encouragement, and it fosters communication and uh, understanding, right? Understanding, and it brings you closer together. <clears throat> now, I was in a relationship for a quarter century. I know, don't even, this was my responsibility. I, I chose it that had a lot of destructive criticism in it aimed at me, right? And then I would fight back, but that didn't really work out very well. So destructive criticism is usually, here's the difference, right? They're polar opposites because the intent behind it isn't good or positive. It's designed to be harsh or disparaging. It's It comes often in the form of, insults, uh, rude comments, degrading behavior, etc. Um, it's often accompanied by contempt or hostility. It undermines trust and erodes relationships. It leaves emotional scars, breaks resent, or breeds resentment and disillusionment, reduces self-esteem, and the person feels invalidated and devalued. Uh, all not really very positive things toward building a relationship, right? I would encourage you, if you are in a relationship with someone that provides destructive criticism, that you find a way to separate yourself from that because it doesn't do anything except break you down. And why do we want to do that? Now, guess what? Sometimes we deliver both types of criticism and we don't realize that we're doing it. I know sometimes... I will raise my voice at my granddaughters, usually because they're going to do something dangerous and it scares the living daylights out of me. But that is a destructive or a negative way of providing feedback. And I don't mean it as criticism. It's just, stop. I don't want you to hurt yourself. I don't want you to fall off that chair. Why are you climbing up there? Why are you in the water? Et cetera. But we want to, when I catch myself doing that, I want to make sure I am reversing that and and. Uh, owning up to when I behave in ways that I don't intend to. Sometimes our behavior comes off as uh, something different than we actually intend. And we want feedback in those areas. We want to know, and we don't really need it in the form of criticism. We need it in the form of feedback. To me, criticism is uh, 
it's pointing out things that are wrong. Feedback should be both pointing out things that are right as well as things that are wrong. I guess that's how I would have distinguished between the two. All right, let's talk about judgment a little bit because I'm getting long winded here. Uh, judgment <clears throat> is forming opinions or conclusions about others based on perceived standards or expectations. So basically, judgment is us filtering other people's behavior or other things through our experiences, our emotions, our feelings, our uh, past experiences about a person, place, topic, or thing, right? And then we're deciding what it means to us. We have to remember that judgment is what something means to us. So when somebody's judging, remember, that is just them expressing what something means to them. Now, uh, in 2010, I had a sudden cardiac arrest. And one of the realizations I had after that death experience was uh, when I got out of the coma and everything was that uh, <clears throat> I couldn't stand judgment or being around people that were super judgmental. And the reason was because that's how I was prior to that event. I didn't really realize I was, but I totally was. I had an opinion about pretty much everything, right? And I realized that not only was that hurting me, but it was hurting other people as well. And so I made a massive change in that area and aspect of my life too. And I started asking myself the question instead of WTF, which was my primary question prior to my sudden cardiac arrest, what am I creating now and who am I to judge? Who am I to judge other people's thoughts, feelings, behaviors, experiences, reactions, etc.? Other people's behavior is often none of my business. Now, if it's hurting me or someone I love and care about, I make it my business. But otherwise, a lot of times, it's just none of my business. <clears throat> so judgment, again, <clears throat> what I try to do these days, and I don't always succeed, right? We're humans. We don't always do what we want to do 100% of the time. But I try to be more empathetic and more understanding and use empathetic understanding instead of judgment. I try to understand and put myself in that person's shoes and say, okay, I might not agree with the way they're behaving or reacting to this or commenting on this, but what experience might they have that's different than mine that I could learn from their point of view? Uh, and that usually gives me a better result than if I just say, oh, you shouldn't feel that way, da, 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 and go off on my own little tangent. And I've learned in my many six decades plus here on the planet, that there are topics and there's are things that we're not going to ever change people's minds on. And it's not our business to change people's minds and get them to agree with us. It's great when people agree with us with things that we feel strongly about, but they don't have to. We all get to live our own life experience. And that means sometimes we'll agree and sometimes we won't. I have a whole bunch more of things we could talk about. Uh, today, with respect to criticism and judgment, big, huge topics. We could probably do a three-day webinar, three-day seminar on these topics alone. But let's keep it simple and let's jump to our action item. I didn't cover it at the beginning today. Our action today is to think about one example of constructive criticism in your life. And then maybe use constructive criticism or positive feedback on one person today. Or you can share an example of destructive criticism. One time when you behaved in a way that you're like looking back now, you're a little embarrassed about because you're like, oh my God, this was totally delivered in the wrong way and I regret having done that. Just think about those things. You don't need to share them today because they're usually pretty personal things, right? Things that we do that we're not proud of, we don't really need to share those with people, but we do want to learn the lesson from them. So that's all I've got today. If you have any questions, hit me up. There's a story and guide too, and there of uh, criticism and the impact it had on. I did not write down the person's name. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, but there's a story there as well as a write-up that goes pretty deeply into both of these topics, criticism and judgment. Uh, so that's it. Any questions, if I can help you ask, let's have a fantastic day. And I will, of course, be with you tomorrow for day 50 of our Let's Grow Annual Challenge. Let's grow every day.